Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to study the runoff and what are the different types of runoff that usually occur after a rainfall and after that, what are the factors which affect a runoff. So let's start. First of all, we'll study about the runoff. So there are two terms that is runoff and the surface runoff. These two are the two different terms and that should not be confused with. The runoff that includes all the water which is flowing in the stream channel at any given section. That means if we are looking at any location, so through the stream channel, for example, if this is the trapezoidal channel which is carrying the water. Let's say this is the stream channel which is carrying the water. So the water which will be flowing through this that is calculated as runoff. While the surface runoff that includes only that water that reaches the stream channel without first percolating down to the water table. That means this is the typical water cycle which starts let's say at the evaporation. So when a certain amount of water it gets heated up because of the constant exposure to the heating bodies for example the sun because of that the certain vapors will be formed and those vapors upon condensation form a cloud which upon the effect of the wind that moves towards the land side. And when it reaches the sufficient height and the suitable conditions, it drops down in the form of the precipitation. This precipitated water that follows a path on the land surface. This water which is draining or flowing of and this precipitation which is draining or flowing on the catchment area through a surface channel that is known as the runoff. So in general the component of the precipitation that has not evaporated nor transpired that is known as the runoff and that is the remaining output of the catchment area per unit time. Now depending upon the location where this runoff is flowing and finally where it is meeting the stream it is classified in different categories. So depending upon the location of the runoff, this runoff is classified into majorly two categories. So the first category that is known as the surface runoff. The water which is flowing over the catchment area on the surface streams that is surface runoff. If it is flowing below the earth's surface that is known as the subsurface runoff. Now this subsurface runoff that is further classified into two different categories that is if within the earth if the water is flowing on the top layer that means within the crust of the earth's surface if the water is flowing then that is known as the prompt interflow which is also known as the seepage water and the water which percolates down to the deeper depths that is known as the delayed flow or that is also known as the base flow. So depending upon the location of the runoff, this is the classification of the runoff and it also depends upon the location where the runoff is finally meeting the stream. So as you can see in this image when the precipitation is happening depending upon the topography of the area certain amount of the water which has precipitated it directly joins the stream and it gets collected in the depressions if there is any. The remaining amount it gets seeping down into the ground and flows laterally and that moves 
under the earth surface so that is known as the interflow and the rest of the amount which percolates at the deeper depths and then flows parallelly that is known as the base flow now this base flow that may contribute immediately to the collection area or may not that depends upon the depth of the base flow so this first one that is the surface runoff that is the first type of the runoff so when a precipitation occurs over a catchment area it will first fulfill the requirement of the evaporation that is required for the hydrological cycle to continue or sustain then the transpiration needs of the plants then if there are any depression storages for example if there is certain area in which this depression is made so the water when it will be flowing it will be getting collected in this depression storage and once it is completely filled only then the runoff will be moving right so after fulfilling all of these needs the water which is still flowing over the surface that is known as the surface runoff now usually all the time this water flows over the land therefore this is also known as the over land flow and it reaches the catchment outlet and is termed as the surface runoff now the second category of the runoff that is below the earth surface and that is known as the subsurface runoff now this is further classified into two categories the prompt interflow which is the part of the precipitation that infiltrates and moves laterally that means horizontally within the upper crust so this interflow that is within the upper crust of the earth surface and it returns to the earth surface at some location away from the point of entry so if a certain drop of water if it has entered through this point so after flowing horizontally it will be coming out here so that is certain other location or certain distance away from the point of entry this component of the runoff is known as the prompt interflow or the seepage or the quick flow or the quick return flow now that depends upon the geological condition whether this upper crust is permeable or not and what is the composition of this soil there are number of factors on which it depends the second component of the subsurface runoff is known as the delayed flow or that is also known as the base flow now when the water is seeping down to the greater depths what is happening this water is not able to apply the required pressure so that it can come out so when it is having the suitable depressions along with it along the level of its flow only then it will be coming out naturally otherwise this water which is flowing below the earth surface at the greater depths that return to the surface after a long period of time and when we are saying the long period of time we are meaning by months or the years and that's why this is known as the delayed flow and since it is flowing below the ground level that's why it is also known as the ground water runoff or the base flow now when the perennial river in case of the perennial river which flows throughout the year this component of the base flow it represents the dry weather flow now there is one more classification of the runoff that depends upon the time delay between the precipitation and the runoff so depending upon the time delay between the precipitation and the runoff so let's say if the precipitation is happening on sunday 
and runoff is being collected on the monday morning so that means there is certain difference between the precipitation and the runoff so that is also one factor with, based upon which we classify the runoff as the direct runoff and the second one is known as the base flow so the portion of the runoff which enters into the stream immediately after the rainfall so this is the component which is entering the streams immediately that is the direct runoff now this involves the component of the surface runoff because that is joining the stream directly and the second component is the prompt interflow which is the water which is flowing below the earth crust or within the upper crust of the earth surface these two component enter the stream immediately after the precipitation now the volume corresponding to this is known as the direct runoff volume and the discharge corresponding to it is known as the direct runoff discharge and the representation of this runoff is done in the form of a plot that is known as the direct runoff hydrograph and these hydrograph are basically the representation of the runoff against time so only one component is left that is the delayed flow and this delayed flow is known as the base flow so volume corresponding to this that will be known as the base flow or the flood runoff volume this base flow that is also known as the flood flow and therefore this will be represented in the form of the flood runoff hydrograph so these are the another type of distinction between the different type of runoffs now this runoff depends upon the number of factors so what are the factors which affect the runoff so first one is the precipitation characteristics now what is this precipitation characteristic it is the most important factor for the runoff so if the storm is heavier so and if it is for higher duration that obviously it will be having higher runoff if within an area more rainfall is occurring obviously the precipitation that will also be higher but if the rainfall is very less over the area then the precipitation is lesser than the runoff will obviously will be lesser so there is a direct relationship between the precipitation and the runoff then the second of the factor that is known as the shape and size of the catchment so if the size of the catchment if that is very large now within this catchment area if we compare this to another catchment which is in having the lesser area in both the areas we are having the same amount of the rainfall so obviously the runoff will be higher in case of the second one because it will be reaching the outlet point this point is known as the outlet point at which the water is collected so the water will be reaching the outlet point in the second case earlier than the first case and that's why the side of the catchment matters now what is the factor of the shape now depending upon the different shapes of the catchment the runoff is different so the, for example this is known as the fan shaped catchment the second one is known as the fern shaped catchment the third one is known as the broad shaped catchment now these are the outlet points of all the three types of the catchments now if we are having the rainfall here so the rainfall will be reaching the outlet point 
earliest in case of the form shaped catchment area then the second quickest it will be within the fan shaped area and it will be last in the broad shaped area that is the impact of the different shapes of the catchment then what is the impact of the topography of the catchment so this runoff it depends upon the surface smoothness and the slope so if the slope is very steep so the runoff will be happening very quickly if the slope is flat then this runoff will be happening very slowly so that is the impact of the topography of the area now the next one is the geological characteristics now within this geological characteristic the most important one is the permeability of the soil and the soil composition so if the permeability of the soil if that is very high then the seepage that will be happening that will be also very high increasing the components of the subsurface runoff and the surface runoff will be lesser and if the surface is rocky then the absorption will be almost nil that means resulting in the more runoff so that is the impact of the geological characteristics then the next one is the meteorological characteristics for example the temperature the wind conditions or the humidity all of these fall under the meteorological characteristics so if the temperature is low that means there will be lesser chances of the evaporation therefore the runoff will be greater if the temperature is high and the greater wind velocity that means there are more chances of the evaporation loss and because of that there will be lesser runoff then the next factor is the character of the catchment surface so if the catchment surface is drained or undrained that decide whether the runoff will be very quick or will be very slow so if there are no natural drainage then the absorption losses will be more and because of that that area will be having lesser runoff for example if you are having certain vegetation in the area let's say this is the area which is having these plants and the trees within the certain areas and another area is having only the houses so in case of the second one there will be lesser absorption but in the first case the roots of the plant they will be absorbing more of the water and because of that the runoff will be lesser in the first case that is the impact of the characteristics of the catchment surface then the last of the characteristics is the storage surface the artificial storage such as dams weirs etc and the natural storages for example the lakes and the ponds now these impact in reducing the peak flow because the lakes and the ponds they will be filled up first and after that the runoff will be happening so because of that the runoff that we will be getting at the outlet point that will be lesser and that is the impact of the storage and these storage facilities they also give the greater chances to the evaporation loss so this is the complete discussion regarding the runoff what are the different components of the runoff and what are the factors affecting the runoff in the next video we will take a look at the methods to calculate the runoff thank you